Thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life, so let's tune in. So glad again to see every one of you here, and this is night number one. Tomorrow night we have Derek Faison. He's just arrived, and he's going to be here ready to give us a word. And this is what we're, we're, we're saying here is that this is an opportunity, and an opportunity to hear from God. And, and in the biblical days, there were opportunities when Jesus would come to a town. There were people that would take advantage of that opportunity. One of the ladies in the Bible that we know of, her name is the lady with the issue of blood. She had an issue for 12 years that she could not conquer. She went to doctors. She spent all her money trying to find a solution to her bleeding problem. But there was a day that Jesus walked into her, to, into her town, and she looked at that as an opportunity. I believe there was other people that had issues just like her and long-lasting issues, but there was something different about her. She began to think to herself. She had a self-talk with herself and just started thinking, you know what, this is my moment. I've tried everything. I've spent all my money. This is my moment. Jesus is coming to town. And if he's coming to town, I've heard that he raises the dead, he does miracles. I'm going to get my breakthrough this week. This is going to be my breakthrough week. This is going to be my breakthrough moment. And the scripture says she showed up where Jesus showed up, and she reached out and touched him, and she received a miracle that very moment. And that can happen here in these next few days. And, and, and the Spirit of God is going to be moving. We fasted for 21 days. All I'm saying is get excited for every single day. I believe that God's going to give us a peace every day. Today's going to be a peace. Tomorrow's going to be a peace. Thursday's going to, I mean, Friday's going to be a peace. And then Sunday's going to be another peace. And then we're going to go out and change our city. And we're going to do the biggest outreach we've ever done in downtown San Bernardino. So get ready for that. So today we're going to be talking about growth again. And, and I have a word for you. And the title of this message is the growth response. Say with me, the growth response. We're going to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 2. And we're going to see a person in this story. Her name is Hannah. And this woman um, was unfruitful her whole life. And something happened in this story that changed her unfruitful situation into a fruitful place, a place where she was unproductive, she had no growth, but after this story is done, you're going to see growth in an area that she never had growth in. This story is really important to us because we are now in the Hannah moment. This city has seen so much turmoil, bankruptcy. Some of our families have gone through so much pain and hurt, and we're thinking, wow, I thought I'd be farther along than I am now. That's okay, because God is saying, I'm changing your season. This is a season that God's changing our church, He's changing our lives, He's changing our families. And any area that you've been unproductive in, start getting excited because God is ready to invade that area if we're willing to change response. So let's look at her condition, and then we'll go into her response. In verse 2, Sir Samuel, verse 2. Elkanah had two wives. We already have a problem right there. He has two wives. Right? I could barely handle one wife. I don't need. <laughs> Hannah and Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah did not. Each year, Elkanah would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the, the, Lord, the Lord of Heaven's armies at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at that time were the two sons of Eli, Hophni, Phinehas, and the days of Elkanah presented, presented his sacrifice. He would give portions of meat to Penina and each of her children. And though he loved Hannah, he would give her only one choice portion because the Lord had given her no children. So Penina would taunt Hannah and make fun of her because the Lord had kept her from having children. Year after year, it was the same. Penina would taunt Hannah as, as they went to the tabernacle. Each time, Hannah would be reduced to tears and would not even eat. Why are you crying, Hannah? Elkanah would ask, 
Why aren't you eating? Why be downtrodden, but downhearted just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having 10 sons? That sounds a little weird. Tell his wife, you know, you have no children. I know you're depressed about that, but you got me. Right? But once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you look, will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for the entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving, but bearing no sound, he thought she was drinking. Must you come here drunk to church? He demanded, throw away your wine. And she said, oh no, sir, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the requests you have asked him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. The entire family got, got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Ramah. When Elkanah slept, slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea, and in due time she gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. So let's talk about her condition. First, she was barren. All that means is she was unproductive, unfruitful, incapable of producing offspring, results, or growth. Growth was happening all around her, but it seemed like she was left out. Have you ever felt like you've been left out? And there are times in your life that growth is happening around you, and it's so easy to get jealous, to get upset, or begin to even covet or get envious of the growth that's happening around you. We need to be careful that we don't get trapped with envy. This is what's happening. If growth is happening around you, I want you to think this way. I must be next. Our perspective is very important, and that's why it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, she was barren, but growth was happening around her. She was also humiliated. Now, in this home, it's, it's tough. Two wives. One of the wives is having children. One of the wives is producing. We don't know how many children she had, but the truth was she was producing and she was fruitful. Hannah, on the other hand, had no children. It was humiliating for her. She was under constant attack. A matter of fact, her enemy was in her own home. Penina wasn't just happy having children. She wanted to degrade Hannah. And every time she saw Hannah, she would bring up, I guess the Lord is not giving you children. And she would taunt her and make fun of her, humiliating her. Really, humiliation means that every time she saw her, she would reduce her to a lower rank. She would dishonor her. She would degrade her. There, there are people in this life that they think their assignment is to torture you. We call them nowadays haters. And there are people that every time you see them, they, they seem to say something sarcastic to you that reminds you of your past, your failures, your inabilities, and make you feel like you're not good enough. They almost rub it in your face. 
But I thank God we don't serve a God that rubs it in our face. What he does, he meets us in our place of lack with his power. Hannah, it's not over. I know Penina doesn't like you, but God says, you have my favor. Don't you worry about what you're going through right now. It's not how it starts, it's how it finishes. Some of you have had a very hard start. It's been challenging. And you're wondering, when is it going to be my turn? And God is saying, your turn is right now. This is a Hannah moment for the way world outreach, our city and our families and the Inland Empire. Get ready. So she was, she was humiliated, humiliated. She was also stuck. Year after year, it was the same. Every year, no results. Every year, she was made fun of. And every year, she was reduced to tears. Every year, she was attacked. It just didn't stop. Year after year, the same results. Maybe you feel like you're talking to me, Pastor. It seems like year after year, I'm getting the same results. I feel like I'm stuck. I'm stuck being unfruitful, unproductive. I feel like I'm not moving ahead. I'm stuck in depression and discouragement. I'm stuck in an abusive cycle. I'm stuck in an addiction. I'm stuck in poverty. I'm stuck in hopelessness. I feel like I'm hindered. I can't move ahead. I feel stuck year after year. It's the same result. That was Hannah's condition. And on top of it, she was being attacked year after year. I'm going to give you some good news about this. The area, it's a spiritual principle. The area that you're being attacked in is the area God's ready to bless you in. She was attacked in her, in being unfruitful, being barren. And God says, don't you worry about it. The enemy is picking on the wrong person. Because I already knew you were barren. I already knew you were struggling. I already knew your situation. But I already had a plan before you were ever born. born. See, what I'm ready to do in your life, no man could do. A matter of fact, you couldn't do it. But I'm ready to intervene in this city. Come on, in your life. And I'm ready to do what no one could do. And I'm going to get the glory. Is there anybody that's saying, okay, ready? I'm ready, Lord, for you to invade my area that's unproductive. It's not going to end in shame. It's not going to end you being humiliated. It's not going to end you being unfruitful. And who's going to determine that? I would say, who's going to determine that? You know who I believe is going to determine that? You're going to determine that. See, there has to be a shift. God's already planned for us to grow this year. This is the year of growth. How many already feel like, man, there's a stretch happening already. I feel like growth. This is a year of growth. But we're going to talk about not just Hannah's condition. We're going to talk about Hannah's response. There was a shift that happened that this year was going to be different than last year. Hannah responded differently this year. The same results, the same enemy, the same church they were going to, the same city they lived in, the same journeys they were taking year after year, the same meals, the same taunting. She kept being made fun of, but something shifted in Hannah. Hannah basically said, I can't continue reacting the same way I've been reacting. If there's going to be growth in my life, there must be a shift in my life. Stop waiting for your enemy to get right. 
for your situation to get right. And why don't you say, God, just make me right. So Hannah, she did something. She did something different. This year was going to be different. This is what the scripture said in 1 Samuel 1, 9. Once after the sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up. The first thing that Hannah did to change her situation, she got up. She got up and went to church. She got up from her self-pity. She got up from being knocked down. She got up from her depression. She got up from her discouragement. She got up. There's a time in your life that you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay in my addiction. I'm not going to stay in my poverty. I'm not going to stay homeless. I'm not going to come. I'm not going to stay rejected. I'm not going to stay abused. It's time for someone here to get up. Get up just means this. It's simple. It means to rise up. It means she stood up. What that means, maybe she was laying down. She was laying down, waiting for what? Staying in her depression, waiting for someone to change, waiting for someone to help her. Could it be that you're waiting for something and God says, I'm waiting on you? It's not the government that's going to help you. It's not your mama's going to help you. It's not your daddy's going to help you. It's not your husband and wife changing that's going to help you. It's you finally saying, I'm done being in this situation. I'm getting up. I'm standing up. She stood up. Let me, she strengthened herself. Say it with me. She strengthened herself. She encouraged herself. You know what that means? Is she, had to have, she had to have some self-talk. She observed her situation. It's very important. If you're ever going to change your results, you got to be honest with yourself. She looked at her situation. He says, year after year, I'm unfruitful. Year after year, Penina makes fun of me. Year after year, I let her reduce me to tears. Every year, we come to the same exact spot to start off the year here worshiping and impartation. I think this was their impartation service. This was their start of the year. And everybody celebrated all the fruitfulness. Penina comes every year. I got another child. And she's saying, God is good. And all my kids are so awesome. They all behave. They're all going to church. And look at all the memory verses. And the Christmas program, all all Penina's kids are up there. (laughs) Singing, praising. And while while Penina's kids are up there, Penina's looking at Hannah like, Sorry, no children, another year of being unproductive. I don't even know why he has you as a wife. You can't even produce. You're really useless. That's just between you and me, Hannah. Well, this is what Hannah was going through year after year. She couldn't wait for Penina to get delivered and set free and get saved. Who knows, maybe they couldn't have children for another reason, but the idea was she couldn't wait anymore. She couldn't wait to be happy, to start doing what she needed to do. She couldn't wait for perfect conditions. She couldn't wait till she just felt it. She just made up her mind, I still don't feel it. I'm in agony, I'm in pain. I might as well have a talk with myself and acknowledge my condition. Penina's getting on my nerves. 
She keeps reminding me of every flaw in my life, and I want to take her out. But the reality is me being bitter and me being angry ain't fixing nothing. I have nightmares about her. I dream about taking her out. I have fantasies that she would just die and it would just be me and my husband and no other wife in the house. I'm sure these thoughts, she's human. But none of those thoughts were going to help her. Sit in there, self-pity, poor me. What have I done to deserve this? Because Penina was sneaky. She was blaming God for her being unfruitful. The reason you're not having children is because God's holding you back. He's closing your womb. He almost shut her down to the point that she would have no hope. Why is that important for everyone here in this room? Be careful that you're not angry at God for what the devil has done. I know you might have gone through a tough time, but God is your answer. He is not your problem. So someone say, she got up. She strengthened herself. She endured. And then she became powerful. When she began to have positive self-talk, said, no, I'm getting up. I'm not going to sit here in the same old pity party for 2020. I'm not going to see her depressed for the rest of my life. I'm doing something about this. I'm taking some action. And she got up and the scripture says that she went to church. For some of you, this is your action step. You got up and you got to church today. And tomorrow you're going to get up and you're going to show up one more time. And the next day you're going to show up and you're going to do what you can to get here. Because you're going to do what you can and that God will do what you can't. She got up, and then she prayed. Hannah got up and prayed. Instead of being angry with God, she put her faith in God. And I know you don't understand everything, because I don't either. I don't understand why, we, why things go the way they go all the time. The unexpected losses of family members. You grew up in a family with serious abuse and abandonment. I don't understand all that. But I do understand that there's a God that can help you with all that. Our response is going to cause the growth. I think this is what happened to Hannah all those years. I don't know if any of those years she prayed. I don't know if any of those years she just, she just stayed, stayed, stayed oppressed. But this year, it was going to be different. In 2020, for Hannah, it was going to be different. Hannah was going to get up. And this time, she was going to place her faith in God to help her with her unproductive situation. God can help us with every condition. Yeah. Hannah lived up to her name. Say, so what was her name? Hannah. But what did it mean? You know what her name meant? Grace and prayer. What did it mean? Grace and prayer. She lived up to her name. She prayed. She turned her pain into a prayer. She turned her pain into a prayer. If you have pain, I get it. But don't just keep the pain. Turn it into a prayer. Don't take your pain to the devil and have him give you a temporary high or a rebound relationship. That's not going to help you. Don't take it to the neighborhood bar. But take it to the Lord. Your pain can be healed, but you're going to have to bring your pain and make it a prayer and bring it to the healer, bring it to the deliverer. God is able. Stop 
stop numbing yourself and start praying. It's okay to feel pain. We don't want to feel pain. But there's a time in your life that you got to say, I'm done turning to fake, fake things, temporary highs to relieve my pain. I see the cycles that I'm in. I keep getting, I keep those lust cycles those anger cycles. I keep staying in those cycles. But this year, it's going to be different. I am done medicating myself, and I'm turning to the great physician to heal me. I am turning my pain into a prayer. Pain into a prayer. She turned it into a prayer. The Scripture said, Hannah was in deep anguish. You know what that means? She was in pain. She was suffering. She had, she had extreme pressure on her. She was in, under extreme embarrassment. She was, she was mentally suffering. It wasn't physical pain. It was mental pain. She was struggling. But she, in her struggle, while she's crying, she just wasn't crying. She was crying and praying. She was crying and what? We're in a time that I think we're living in a world, and I, and I think we're, we're, we're in denial. There's some things that we've been ignoring, and we call this sweeping it under the rug. We've been unproductive. The unproductivity and the unfruitfulness and the lack of growth has been passed on to our children. And this is what has happened. We've lost our passion. So we ignore it because we don't want to deal with it because if we deal with it, it'll be painful. It's time for us to feel our pain again. And realize there's some things that are so crucial in our lives. We can't keep sweeping it under the rug. The church needs to get its cry back, its passion back. Come on. When I grew up in church, we used to call it praying through. We used to come to the altar and lay our burdens down. But we acknowledge our burdens. And then there will be church mamas that were praying us through. Come on, son. You're not done yet. Let go of that thing. Come on, son. Get, get delivered. Get set free. And then the Holy Spirit would move. And then we'd begin to cry. It wasn't, no, it wasn't no cheap prayers. It was prayers that were emotional, that had pain, and our lives depended on it. We didn't let our kids go to hell with a celebration. We said, son, you have no hope to stay in that condition because every night I'm going to bring you before the Lord. I'm crying for you, I'm interceding for you, and I'm not going to let you go to hell on my watch, son. I'm not going to let my city go to hell on my watch. Let's get the weeping back. Let's get the crying back. Let's get the agony back. You know why I say about agony? Because we're in church to feel good, instead of coming to church to get right. Not every message is supposed to be a feel-good message. There's some messages that should cause you some deep pain that leads to some crying prayers. I'm not going to accept this depression. I'm not going to accept God, this confusion. I'm not going to accept, come on, this shame, this condemnation. I'm not going to accept it anymore. It's time to cry and pray. 
Do you know why God responded? Because her prayer meant something to her. We've lost the discipline of prayer. Maybe we don't even think, maybe there's two things. Maybe we don't think God works. Or maybe we're in denial of our true condition. God, forgive me for being numb for being distracted, for losing my passion for my own family. Forgive me for being lost in my addiction, trying to numb the pain that's supposed to take me to the cross. Feel it. Feel the pain. You never heard that. We got to feel this pain. The scripture says she was in anguish and she was crying, but she was praying. You know what that meant? Is that her feelings didn't change, her circumstance didn't change, her situation didn't change, but her prayer changed. In deep anguish. This is a second response, third response. She didn't fall for the trap. Say it with me, she didn't fall for the trap. Now, this is what happened while she was praying. Just check this out. She goes to church to pray. She has Penina on her nerves. And I'm sure Penina wasn't saying stuff in front of her husband. She would take, she would take Hannah to the side and say, so we're going to go to the temple. We're going to go to Shiloh again. And you have no children. <laughs> it's so funny that God is shutting down your room and me. I'm having baby after baby after baby after baby. I'm blessed, you're not. But, but let's go. I'll kind of said, what's going on? Oh, nothing, hubby. We were just talking about life. So all that abuse year after year, and being unproductive year after year, she has all that agony. And then she finally goes to church. And she didn't have a greeters team that were trained to love people into the house. Nobody met her at the door. She finally kneels down. She's changing her response. I'm gonna get, something's gonna change in my life. I don't feel it, but I'm moving in the right direction. God's not my problem, God is my answer. And if I don't start praying and including God, this year is going to be like last year. This is not the lotto. Well, I hope this year's better. Cross my fingers, hope to die. What kind of demonic prayer is that? Is that the kind of God that you serve, the God of luck? That you're hoping your year turns around because it's going to be, I hope this year is just a fortunate year. Your year doesn't change until you change. This year could be the best year of your life if your priorities change. Come on, if you start getting up and getting to church and getting on your knees and start praying and repenting of our sins. You know why Christians backslide? Because they have no purpose. We are here, for, there's a sick and dying world. When was the last time you cried for someone else? We're so quick to cry over our situation. <laughs> And that's okay, cry for your situation. But let's go deeper than that. Let's start having, that's God for a burden for the lost people in your family, in this world that need Jesus. Let's keep going. So she gets to church. This is crazy. 
as she was praying in 1 Samuel 1, 12, as she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Who's Eli? He, Eli's the priest or the pastor of the house. Seeing her lips moving, but not hearing no sound, he sees her, and he sees her lips moving. But he don't hear no sound, so he must have tried to get real close. No voice is coming out of her. So the scripture says, seeing her lips moving, but, but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. And then he tells her in church, must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine, girl. <laughs> like, Penina is a problem, but now the pastor's a problem. The people in the church are accusing me of drinking. I'm not drinking, I'm just praying. I wonder how many of us would have fell for the trap. And you would have just left the church all offended. I can't believe the way we're allowed, the place you'll be loved, the place you'll be accused and judged. And if the pastor's like that, I imagine how the congregants are. The sad thing, if, if Hannah fell, for the trap, she would have left with her dysfunction. Every time you're ready to get a miracle, the devil will send you an offensive situation. So if there's a fence all around you and rude people all around you, maybe even sitting right next to you, it's time for you to start getting excited because God is ready to turn your situation around. But be careful that you don't trade in your miracle, your salvation, your healing for an offense. Someone say you can't have both. She said, oh no, sir, she replied, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I'm very discouraged, I'll tell you that. I got some real problems. And you're trying to be a problem, but I'm not going to let you be a problem. <laughs> the truth was, the truth was, I was pouring my heart out to the Lord before you rudely interrupted me. No. <laughs> And you don't even know me. You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know year after year, all the ridicule and the fun I've been made of, how I feel, I feel humiliated every single day. And I come to church and now you're humiliating me. I don't think so. That would be some of us. But it wasn't Hannah. She said, oh no, sir. I'm not going to get distracted because I'm not here for you. I'm here for a breakthrough for my life. I'm here to change my destiny. And this year is going to be a year of growth. I already had enough practice with Penina. You're nothing compared to Penina. And if I can handle Penina, I can handle you. There's some people that the devil has put in your life that is training you for your destiny and your purpose. Thank God for those difficult people. If Penina couldn't get me, you surely can. Oh no, sir, I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I'm very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. That's all I was doing. Don't think I'm a wicked woman. And she got her voice a little high because of the exclamation point. Don't you think I'm a wicked woman? <laughs> For I've been praying out of my great anguish and sorrow. I've had great anguish and sorrow, but I've been praying. I am a praying woman this year. I'm going to get growth this year. I'm going to be fruitful this year. Things are going to change, and it's going to start with my deep prayers. This year, I'm not going to be emotional. I will take my emotions to the cross. I will not take my emotions to the bar, to my friend, to my, to my buddy. I'm going to take them to the Lord. So now, let's end this. Someone say, she didn't fall for the trap. I'm not drunk. 
I'm desperate. And the truth is, I'm not going to let your opinion, your thoughts about me get me off track. Because the scripture said, Eli thought she was drunk. So he's thinking. There's people thinking about you. And you know what's so sad? People are thinking. You're, you're so concerned about what people are thinking about you. Who are they anyways? You guys have some haters that haven't done nothing in their lives. Then they have, some of them only have a J-O-B and you're concerned about them. Their lives are a wreck. And you know what? You need to start upgrading your haters. We need to do is start getting some hater applications in. Say, you're not even at the level to hate me. Get out of here. You haven't done nothing in life for me to care about you. Get out of here. You got to qualify to be a hater. My hater. You got done something. That your opinion will even matter. Don't let what people think about you redefine you. Hannah stayed with her, with her definition of her name. She said, my name is Hannah. I pray and I receive grace. I pray and I receive unmerited favor. I pray and I receive breakthrough. Don't you get this twisted. My, my name is not a drunk. My name is not an addict. My name, come on, my name is not depression. My name is not bipolar. My name is not anger. My name is Hannah. I'm a prayer warrior and I receive the grace of God. Don't you let your mistakes, your problems, and people redefine you. And the last thing she responded, she believed and received. Someone say, she believed and received. She, reje she rejected the offensive words of Eli and received the faith-filled words of Eli. Same mouth, different message. Be careful that you're not falling for the trap of being offended with the person that God's going to use to give you a word. Because God uses imperfect people to give you a divine word. And that's where people get on me, oh man, the church is full of hypocrites, full of church, church is full of... <laughs> Be careful, because God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You know what God is saying? I take a whole bunch of people that need help, and I use them to help. My mouthpiece is still in the mouth of my believers. I am still speaking through people that are perfect, but they're my children, and they're carrying a message. And don't you get it all twisted. I'm still using my church to bring breakthrough, healing, and deliverance. And the other thing is, stop letting the devil Christians talk you out of preaching, speaking, sharing, praying, prophesying. Because he shows you all your shortcomings. Don't let your shortcomings stop you from coming up. Because we pray and God gives us his grace, unmerited favor. God will use you while you're still a project. Come and understand that. Until I get to heaven, I'm a project, but I still have a purpose. I'm a project with a purpose, and I'm not going to let my mistakes stop me from going forward. But the last thing. She said, I'm not drunk, homie. Serious. Take that wine out of here. I don't got no wine. I've just been praying. I've been discouraged. I've been praying. I'm, I'm praying to the Lord. I'm praying in Jesus' name. I'm going to the resurrection and the life, the beginning and the end, the creator of the universe. I'm going to the one and that's the Lord of the harvest, the one that could turn this around. And she goes, this is cool. He goes, well... In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again. She ended her fast. And she was no longer sad. She started praising God. This is what happened to Hannah. She received a word. God is raising up a people that are going to give a prophetic praise. What I mean by that is, there's some people that praise God for what he's done, and that's good. 
There are some people that praise God for what he is doing now, and that's good. But there's a whole nother group of people that praise God because they believe God and they've not seen the situation change, but they know it's done because they got a word from God. Are there any prophetic praisers in this house that can say thank you? Let it go. Move on. Even though nothing looks like it's changed in the physical. You know why some of us can't get great break, 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 Interpret that. Get great breakthroughs because we're too hard-headed. We're so focused on our problem that when the word of God comes and gives us a solution, we're doubting it and rejecting it. Thinking about it. I love Hannah. She had a lot to think about. Penina could have messed her up. She could have got so angry with Penina, she would have never received the miracle. Because understand, if you're offended, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you offended? Because if you're offended, this is how you know. All you talk about is your offender. And you can't be talking about your breakthrough with God if you're talking about your offender. So she could have been talking about her offender. She could have been talking about her situation. She could have said, Eli, what would you say? Are you sure? Do you even know my condition? Do you even know what I've been praying? Because Eli didn't even know what she was praying. All she was looking for was just one positive word to hang her faith on. And she said, he said, go in peace. And she said, what? Go in peace? You represent God, right? I receive that. I received that. I didn't receive the other part. I was drunk, but I received that. I could tell that wasn't from God, but this one is from God. You got to be able to determine what's from God, what ain't from God. And receive when it's a word from God. You got to say, I got it. I'm going in power and praise. Come on, something shifted. She left her sadness in the church. She stopped fasting, and she said, thank you. Thank you for what? She believed that she received everything that she needed by just one word. Right now, if you're a Hannah, come on, you could receive one word from God from this, come on, this crazy Puerto Rican preacher that has, still has issues. But even in my issues, I am carrying a word from God that's going to change your year. Come on. Can anybody give some prophetic praise right now? You're thanking God for what he's already done in 2020. Let's all stand up. If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.